In this tutorial, I'll be going over how you can use the transform tool in Inkscape. I'll first be going over a quick demonstration of what it is and how it works, and then I'll show you an example of how to create something interesting with it like I've done here with this spiraling hexagon design. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'm doing in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that down below in the description if you want to check that out. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So I have this example graphic placed on my document here, and I'm going to open up the transform menu by going to object and selecting transform. And it should open up over here on the right hand side of your screen. Now what the transform tool does is it allows you to make basic transformations to objects that you would normally make with the selection tool, only it allows you to do it using numerical values. So if you come over here to the top, you can see these tabs. We have these different options for moving, scaling, rotating, skewing, and matrix. We're going to ignore the matrix one for this demonstration. I'm just going to show you how these other ones work. So let's say I have this object on my page and I want to move it over a certain number of pixels. You can normally move objects by just clicking and dragging, but the problem with doing it that way is that you don't get a precise movement. Let's say I wanted to move this over exactly 50 pixels. I can come over here to the horizontal input and type in 50, and then come down here and click apply, and you can see it moves the object over 50 pixels. So let me undo what I just did right there. Let me reset this value, and now I'll show you how scale works. Scale is useful because normally when you want to scale an object by a certain numerical value, you would use the width and height inputs in the toolbar up top. So if I wanted to scale this down to 400 pixels wide, I would type that in and press enter. And you can see it scales it down, but the problem with using this approach is that it takes the object off of the center of its axis. So if you notice, the object is no longer in the center of my document. It now went to the top left because with these inputs up here, it scales the object from the bottom right to the top left. Now if I undo that, it'll put it back in the center. The benefit of using the transform tool is that it allows you to scale the object using the numerical value directly from the center. And you can also use a percentage value as well. Now if you want to use pixels, you can go ahead and select pixels, but for this demonstration, I'll just use percentages. And I'm just going to type in, well first I'm going to select scale proportionately so that it scales both dimensions. And I'm going to scale this down by 50%. And I will click apply and you can see what happens. It scales the object down exactly in the center so that it doesn't lose its alignment on the page. Now let's go over the rotate tab. Normally when you want to rotate an object, you can click on it to select it, click on it again to get the rotation handles and you can rotate it around freehand like that, or you can hold the control key and lock it to 15 degree increments. The problem with using this approach is that you don't get an exact rotation. So let's say you wanted to rotate your object by a specific numerical value like 26 degrees or some kind of random number. You would normally have to click and drag like this and look towards the bottom of the screen to see the angles and hope that you can release the click exactly where you need it to be. Or you can just use the rotation tool. So I can come over here and type in let me just replace this value, type in 26, and you can choose whether to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise, and then click apply, and you can see it rotated the object 26 degrees. And the way the transform tool works is, this is all cumulative, so if I keep clicking apply over and over again, it'll rotate it 26 degrees relative to its previous position. So I can keep rotating this indefinitely like that, and you get the idea. Now let's go over how you can create that spiraling hexagon design that I showed you at the beginning of the video. I'm going to grab my stars and polygons tool over here, and the settings I want to use are polygon, I want six corners, and rounded and randomized both set to zero, and then I'm going to click and drag on the canvas and then hold control and shift and click and drag so that we get a nice uh, upright hexagon like that. You can rotate it around to make sure that the corners are going perfectly up and down vertically like that. And I'm going to grab my selection tool and I first want to center this on the page. So I will come over here to object and I will choose align distribute and I'm going to choose page from the relative to drop down and I'm going to center this up on the page and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hold control and shift and scale this down to make it really small. We want this object to be pretty small and I'm going to remove the fill color by clicking the red X down here and I'm going to apply a black stroke by holding the shift key and pressing the color black next to that. Uh, number right there or next to that red X and now I want to make sure that this 
stroke is one pixel. So I'll open up my fill and stroke menu by double clicking this stroke box down here. And I'll come over here to the stroke style tab and I'm gonna size this at one pixel. And I wanna make sure that the join has sharp corners. And then I wanna come up here to this setting in the toolbar that says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. I wanna make sure that that is enabled. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my transform tool and I'm gonna use two different transformations. I'm first going to scale it by 110% and then I'm going to rotate it by 10 degrees. But before I do that, I wanna make a duplicate copy. So this is the original copy. I'm gonna make a duplicate by either right clicking it and going to duplicate or just pressing Command D or Control D. And when you press that, you'll have a duplicate copy there. And once you do that, come over here to the scale tab. Let's scale this. Well, first of all, enable scale proportionately, and we're gonna scale this by 110 degrees or 110% and click apply. And then we'll come over here to rotate and we're gonna rotate this by 10 degrees. So let me replace this, replace this with 10 and there we go. And now I'm just gonna repeat that process over and over until we get the intended effect. So I'm gonna press Command D again to duplicate the object and I will rotate it and then come over here and scale it and then I will do that again. Press Control D to duplicate, scale it, and then rotate it, and then do the same thing. Control D to duplicate, rotate it, scale it, and you can see that the design is starting to come together as I do this. So I'm gonna duplicate this a bunch of times and apply these transformations, and then I will catch up with you when I'm all done. And you can make as many copies as you want. I made this many right here. If I click and drag over all of these, it'll show you how many objects you have selected. Let me move this out of the way. You can see we have 19 objects selected. So I have 19 copies in total. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these to a path. So I'll go to path and select stroke to path. And then I will unify them together by going to path and selecting union. And now what I will do is I will come back over here to my fill and stroke tab. I wanna bring the opacity down in half so I can see what I'm about to do once I do this. And now I will go to path and select break apart. And you can see what I mean there. Once you break that apart, you can see all of the different layers beneath the original. So I'll click off of that to deselect it. And I wanna take this larger hexagon in the back here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then I'll take this object in the center and press delete to get, up, press delete to get rid of that and then I will bring the opacity of this up to 100%. And if you want, you can go and color in each of these arms a different color if you want to apply your own design, uh, your own style to it. Or what you could do is you could just select it all and go to Path and select Union. And we end up with this cool little abstract sort of hexagon shape. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's just one example of how you can use the Transform tool in Inkscape to create an interesting design. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.